Hello and welcome to this video. So this video is part of a series of video that are prepared for the, the class Introduction to Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning for Engineers, uh, which, it, which is taught at uh, UCLA. So um, the goal of this class is to provide um, an introduction to the fundamentals of artificial intelligence and machine learning, but it's not a conventional computer science class. The goal of this class is really to see how can we learn those tools, those new tools of data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning, but to apply it to solve problems that are relevant to engineers, to apply it to solve engineering problems. So in this class, we'll provide some uh, conceptual and some mathematical background to understand uh, the concept of machine learning in a different algorithm at the basis of machine learning so that engineers can use those new tools uh, while understanding what they are doing and not just using them as a as black box. But uh, we will really focus on uh, how to use those techniques to solve engineering problems and how to see what are the good practices, how to use it in a meaningful way and in a way that can be trusted. If you need to contact me for this class, uh, my email is uh, bauchi, B-A-U, C-H-Y, at uh, UCLA. Dot edu and um, if you want to consult the, the website from our research group to know more about what we are doing uh, you can do that at uh, lab-paris.com so in this first video what we are going to see is see we review a few examples of um, application of machine learning and why is it interesting for engineering what kind of problems what kind of engineering problems can be solved by artificial intelligence and machine learning and especially specifically we are going to focus on in the context of uh, civil engineering which is the, the department within this class is, uh, is offered at UCLA and then we are going to uh, simply begin by defining some terms what is really int artificial intelligence what is machine learning how do they relate to each other so we're just going to review a few definitions so that we agree on what the term that we are going to be using within this class so what is machine learning? The first thing um, to make sure we understand is that machine learning is everywhere in our daily life. Um, and uh, especially over the, the past years, it has really took off and plays a key role in a lot of activities that we are doing on a daily basis. Uh, one of the many examples uh, where machine learning is heavily used is, uh, is the, the tech industry. So everything that is related to um, uh, search engine uh, is an example so um, Google uh, all the, the search engine like most of the results are heavily relying on, on machine learning uh, face recognition so uh, face recognition either to uh, identify you or to um, um, uh, unlock your phone um, like the the way uh, handle, handle device are able to recognize your your faces based on a, a 3D map of your face or based just simply on a, on a picture also heavily relies on, uh, on machine learning. Uh, there is a lot of other examples that uh, also um, happen in the background of our daily life like everything that is uh, linked to spam identification like the way uh, Gmail or other um, email providers are able to identify spam email and discriminate them from a non-spam email this is also something that, that relies on machine learning um, all the, the virtual assistants, so uh, Siri, Alexa, all those things uh, also heavily relies on machine learning both in terms of how to recognize your voice, how to analyze what you say, and also how to understand the meaning of what you say and how to, 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 to provide um, the right action or the right answer to your, to your query. Everything that is related to um, product recommendation is also a very important part of machine learning. So for example, if you go to Amazon or another um, website of this sort, and if you browse um, one, uh, one type of product, the, the, the website will recommend you some other product that are um, related to this product that you, are, that you want to buy. Um, other example of this is, um, uh, for example, uh, Netflix. Uh, if you uh, watch a movie, Netflix will make some recommendation of similar movies that uh, it thinks 
will be relevant to you as well based on the, uh, the, the movie that you have watched and also the, the movies that the, the other users of Netflix uh, has watched uh, before. So again, uh, all of those recommendations uh, heavily relies on, uh, on machine learning. Uh, other example is uh, fraud detection. So, example, if you use your, your credit card and uh, the bank uh, ba um, bans the, the transaction um, because it thinks that there is something uh, suspicious, something unusual, um, then uh, all those things are typically handled by, by machine, as, uh, machine learning as well. All those uh, fraud detection, anomalies detection, detecting unusual patterns, uh, this is something that can be achieved by, uh, by machine learning. And finally, a last example, um, which is becoming more and more popular, is uh, self-driving cars. Um, the, the way cars are able to, to drive by themselves, uh, by analyzing their environment, uh, adapting their action to the environment, this is also something that uh, would not be possible without machine learning. Machine learning and artificial intelligence also start to play a role that becomes more and more important in engineering and uh, especially uh, in civil engineering and uh, environmental engineering. So just to give you a few examples, uh, first example in uh, structural engineering. So in structural engineering, there is a various application that either are presently pioneered by um, professors or that are already used in practice. Um, example include, for example, uh, detecting damage in structure, so a damage um, detection. So um, whatever the, the structure is and um, whatever um, um, the, the types of damage we are talking about, um, the, the, the main idea of um, using machine learning to detect damage is to analyze um, when, you, when you build a structure, you, uh, you have access to a lot of data. Those data can be based on uh, sensors. So if you have some sensors that are embedded within the structures, or you can have some uh, some some image, for example, if you have just a, a video or some periodic pictures of the, of the structure. And the idea is to how to analyze those data to either detect uh, cracks uh, within pictures of your structures, or um, how to learn how to detect patterns uh, patterns of data within the, 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 the data that are provided by the sensors that are suggestive of the existence of an under underlying damage within the structure. So the idea is that um, modern structure tends to generate a lot of data uh, in real time and machine learning can make sense of those data and uh, identify when there is something unusual and when there is a, a risk um, that is compromising the integrity of the structure. Another potential example of uh, application of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in the context of structural engineering is also the uh, optimization of um, structures. So, for example, um, if you uh, build a given uh, structure, whether it's um, a bridge or whether it's just a, a member that is meant to, to carry some load, in many cases, um, you will want to do some optimization. So, for example, you typically want to um, uh, make sure that your member will be as strong as possible or at least will be strong enough to carry uh, the load that you are targeting for your structure plus some uh, um, safety factor. But you also want the, the structure to be as light as possible so that it doesn't have to carry its own weight and um, you want your structure to be um, ideally as cheap as possible. And to, um, uh, for this, you will need to optimize the geometry of the structure so that it can be um, strong enough to resist the, the service load while also being uh, light enough. And this um, is going to, um, uh, this can be achieved by some uh, machine learning algorithm, that, for example, some topology optimization algorithm that will uh, optimize the shape of your structure to make it uh, as strong as possible while being uh, as light as possible. Another uh, example of uh, machine learning application is in the context of uh, geotechnical engineering. So in uh, geotech, you have also uh, various uh, potential application of, uh, of machine learning. Uh, one of the examples among many others is to, uh, for example, analyze uh, satellite, uh, satellite data uh, to, to get some properties of, uh, of soils. So uh, to um, just based on either um, data can be provided, for example, uh, image 
uh, provided by uh, satellites um, or aerial views or again uh, sensors uh, that are put in the ground that can provide some data and machine learning can use those data in order to find uh, relevant patterns that can give you some uh, information about the, the properties of soils and uh, the risk of uh, liquefaction of or other kind of um, soil properties like the, the moisture of the soil or things like this. Another example uh, is uh, in the context of uh, civil engineering uh, materials. So um, everything related to materials, whether it's uh, materials uh, for uh, material science and engineering or more specifically structural uh, materials for civil engineering application. There's a lot of works in uh, related to material informatics. So the idea of designing new materials by machine learning rather than uh, by just trial and error or by um, using um, physical or chemical theories but to uh, rather than using uh, theories the idea is can we just learn about uh, the previous data that we have accumulated about materials and based on this inform uh, the choice that we make when when it comes to material design or use artificial intelligence to discover new types of materials with unusual properties. So for example, in the context of civil engineering, one uh, very important work um, is to um, uh, use machine learning to predict the, the strength development in, uh, in concrete. So um, this is um, a very important area since uh, most of the, in the infrastructure that we are making um, rely on, on concrete. And um, besides the, the fact that concrete is really everywhere uh, in, a, in modern society and that concrete is by far the most used material on earth, uh, much more used than any other uh, material like steel or plastic or anything else, uh, despite all of this, we still don't have like very good um, robust theories that can predict the, um, the way strength developed uh, in concrete after you start mixing um, the, the cement powder, uh, ad, um, the admixtures and the aggregates with, with water. So you, you start with the, um, the cement that you mix with water and then initially it's a slurry that is mostly liquid um, and then uh, little by little as you wait uh, several days uh, start, the strength starts to develop and you the, the liquid gradually turns into a stone and that's how we can um, build uh, most of the infrastructure that, uh, that we rely on uh, in our daily life. But uh, predicting at which rate um, the strength develop in concrete and what will be the, the maximum strength that you will uh, get in a given concrete, this is something uh, that is uh, a pretty difficult task and we don't have like very good physical or chemical theories to do that. So uh, in many cases, this uh, just relies on uh, experience, previous experience. But uh, the main advantage of uh, using machine learning to do this is that uh, by using artificial intelligence um, and machine learning, we can analyze a lot of uh, concrete data that have been observed, uh, that have been obtained over the, the past years and use it to uh, predict um, the, what will be the, the strength of concrete as a function of its formulation, as a function of how much water you have, as a function of how much cement you use, as a function of how much aggregate you use, and use this to inform the choice of optimal concrete formulation that are um, as strong as possible, as um, cheap as possible, and also as uh, environmental friendly as possible. That is to say, uh, you can use those types of approach to reduce the, the CO2 impact of concrete and of materials in general. Um, another type of um, example is um, more general than just uh, for civil engineering is, um, to, is the idea of using machine learning to discover new types of materials uh, with targeted applications. So for example, if you want to discover new types of materials that, are, that have unusually high thermal isolation properties or unusually high strength, while having uh, an, uh, while remaining very light, all this um, aspect that is related to to material discovery, discovering new materials with uh, unusual properties, this is something that can also be achieved by uh, by machine learning. There are so a lot of examples of uh, machine learning application of uh, environmental engineering. So in, in the context of environmental engineering, 
um, uh, a lot of examples, for example, involve the, the prediction of uh, weather and prediction of climate. Uh, here, the main idea is, is to identify uh, previous, da uh, previous data, to use previous data regarding um, evolution of uh, weather and climate, and to use those data in order to predict how uh, climate is changing and will be changing in the future. Uh, there is also a lot of work regarding um, air quality forecasting, like forecasting how the, the air quality is uh, evolving in a, in a given period uh, as a function of uh, present condition. Um, there is a lot of activities related to, to monitoring, for example, monitoring the level of snow in, um, in mountains or relating the, um, the, the size and uh, the evolution of a uh, forest. Uh, predicting flood, uh, coastal flood or flood at the vicinity of, um, of rivers, uh, all those things about uh, so forecasting, um, uh, predictions um, and um, uh, monitoring in general, um, those, uh, all those activities that again um, heavily rely on, uh, on data and can uh, to be used to analyze previous data in order to predict the, um, the future. Uh, those are uh, a lot of, in, uh, a lot of uh, very um, interesting in, um, application for environmental engineering. And then there is also uh, some, some other examples um, uh, in general, uh, for example, predicting uh, traffic or especially predicting the, the traffic during crisis, for example, uh, during uh, evacuation due to fire, which is something that is pretty relevant to, to California, uh, trying to predict um, the, the action the, that uh, users or the, the action of uh, that inhabitants will be performing during a crisis when evacuating a, a given area and how to optimize uh, road network um, signalization information in order to, to, to prevent having too much traffic jams during evacuation during crisis. This is um, uh, a very interesting field of, uh, of machine learning as well. So what is machine learning? So to try to understand what is machine learning and to come up with um, a definition of what, it, what, of what is machine learning, uh, let's take um, an example to illustrate how machine learning differs from um, other ways to solve problems and to solve engineering problems, for example. So let's take a, a simple example, which is not so much of an engineering problem, uh, but it's nevertheless an important problem, which is the problem of uh, detecting spam emails. And um, so you have a given email and your goal is to detect um, whether it is a spam or not a spam. So that's um, something that is usually pretty easy for humans to do. If um, a human see a given email, they can pretty easily detect and decide if it's a spam or not a spam with a pretty high accuracy. Uh, but when it comes to computer, of course, computers cannot uh, think like humans do. So it's a more challenging task for, for computers to decide um, to label um, emails as being spam or non-spam. So when it comes to um, taking a given email and detecting whether it's a spam or not a spam, there is really two ways you can think about how to achieve this thing. So um, the first option, so option one, would be to follow uh, some rules, to come up with a, a list of rules of uh, what makes a spam email a spam or what makes an email that is not a spam, what are the conditions that makes it not being a spam. So this is something that we can define as being um, explicit programming, where you are going to teach the computer to recognize what is a spam by teaching it what the theory of what is a spam. So for example, you will list a given um, list of explicit conditions. So you will uh, uh, establish some condition. For example, you will say, if um, there is more than, uh, let's say, 10 emails per second that are being sent, then it's very likely that if you, um, if you send the same email uh, a very, um, uh, frequent uh, at a very fr uh, high frequency, like so, if the the frequency of the um, the, the email being sent is larger than uh, ten email per second, then, for example, you will say that okay, there is a pretty high probability that this uh, email is indeed a spam. Or you can look at the um, the text. You can say that if the email 
is uh, is very short, less than 100 words, um, then maybe it's very likely that uh, it's a spam. So if the, the length of the email uh, satisfy um, certain condition, like the number of words, then you can say, OK, um, there is a, uh, X percent uh, of probability that it's a spam. Or you can look at certain types of keywords, like uh, some certain types of keywords uh, will come very often um, uh, in um, in uh, spam emails uh, that are focusing on certain types of topics. Or you can look at, um, for example, if there is any uh, any typos, so you can uh, define a list of um, common typos, and you can say that if uh, the number of typos divided by the the number of of words in the email is uh, let's say larger than um, than uh, than uh, zero one so if, if there is a uh, for every word if for every 10 word if there is at least one typo then uh, you will say that okay it's very likely that it's a spam uh, having typos is a very common signature of uh, spam emails so here the idea is that you teach uh, explicitly the computer to recognize what a spam is by defining some conditions, some rules, just like you would teach, um, like if you want to teach a kid how to recognize a spam from not a spam, you will also explain it explicitly. What are the, the conditions? How would you recognize um, a spam by giving listing a list of uh, certain conditions? So this is again uh, uh, some explicit programming because you explicitly write some condition and if those conditions are satisfied, then um, the, the computer will label the email as being a spam. In this case, it's like uh, writing um, a recipe, like uh, a cooking recipe. So you just um, uh, establish a list of instruction. Um, uh, for example, uh, mix the, the flour with the water, add one egg, put, uh, mix the, the paste and then put it in the oven for, for 30 minutes at uh, this temperature. So you explicitly give some instructions and the computer will just follow those instructions that you are giving it and based on if those instructions, uh, if those conditions are fulfilled or not, the computer uh, will label the spam, uh, the, the email as being a spam or not a spam. So in this case, you know exactly um, um, what the computer is doing and uh, the computer will just exactly follow the instruction that you are um, uh, telling him to do and uh, in this case you know exactly um, if the, the computer is labeling the, um, the email as being spam or not a spam you can know exactly why it did this choice because you came up uh, yourself with the, um, the, the specific instruction that can define what is a spam from what is not a spam. So this is option one, this is uh, explicit programming. Um, then there is a, an alternative option, which is option two, which is now to use uh, machine learning to uh, accomplish this, this task of um, uh, identifying if any given email is a spam or not a spam. So here, uh, the idea is completely different. Now you will not teach the computer to recognize, um, you will not give the computer um, explicit rules of what a spam is. What you will do, on the other hand, is to provide some examples. So for example, you will provide, uh, let's say, one million examples of emails that are not spam. And then you will provide another uh, one million examples of uh, emails that are spam. So this would require that first you, cons you constitute a database of emails that somebody, a human, has reviewed and has identified, yes, it is a spam, no, it is not a spam. So you have now some data uh, that are labeled. You have the, the example of the, of the spam, you have the text of the spam, you have the, the email of the center, you have a different information about what time this email was sent, um, uh, who was it sent to, uh, like uh, what, what, um, what was the content of the email, what was the word, etc. And then um, each email is being labeled by a human as being spam or not spam. And then the main idea is that you will provide this database to a computer and the computer will now just 
um, learn by example the 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 computer will just look at those data and will try to find its own rules just by looking at those examples to uh, come up on its own um, uh, with uh, what are the conditions to uh, identify an email as being spam or not spam. In this case, there is no explicit condition. You are just providing some examples to the computer and you will just let the computer decide on its own to come up with its own strategy to define what a spam is and what is not a spam. So it's possible that the, the, lab, the, the computer will come up with exactly the same rules that uh, you would have used um, you as human to detect um, if, a, if an email is a spam or not a spam. So for example, it, maybe it will find that um, that there are certain keywords that are very frequent in spam emails and that are very um, very rare in uh, regular emails. So that's one thing. But it's also possible that um, the computer will find like um, very non-intuitive ways that you would not have thought out as human to distinguish what is a spam from what is not a spam. But the main idea is in this case, you are not giving the recipe to the computer. You are not... Uh, explicitly writing some rules. You are just providing some examples and then uh, by following a certain algorithm, um, the, the machine learning uh, algorithm that is used by the computer will just find its own rule. It, it will find its own strategy to distinguish spam email from non-spam emails. So let's take um, another example to illustrate how machine learning uh, differs from uh, other types of computing strategies. So for example, let's assume that you want to teach a computer to play a given game. And for example, let's take the example of um, a tic-tac-toe game uh, where you have a, let's say like a, a three by three grid like this. And uh, each player will, um, will put uh, either a cross or a circle uh, one after the other in one of those nine boxes uh, with the goal to have uh, three crosses or three circles that are aligned with each other. So if you want to teach a computer how to do this, again, the, the, the first option is to, um, to do some um, explicit programming, so to have some uh, explicit rules, uh, an explicit strategy that you uh, teach the computer to do. For example, you will say, uh, to the computer, if you are the, the first to start, uh, you can always put um, your first um, cross uh, at, at the edges, or you can say if you are the, the, the second, then you should always um, start uh, by putting it in the, in the middle. Um, then um, uh, you, you, you will come up with some rules, then you will say, for example, uh, then uh, start to uh, to put in the in the corner, and then um, you will say if there is at least two um, crosses like this that are already aligned with each other, then you necessarily need to block this uh, this attempt. So if there is mo already more than um, two crosses like this, then necessarily you need to to block these things, etc. 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 So you can come up with um, certain types of uh, rules like this that uh, explicitly defines uh, what are the action to do according um, to the um, to the situation what is the the action that um, the the computer should do so this is a would be an explicit strategy where you directly say if the opponent does this, then does that. And if you are the, the, the first player to start, then you need to play like this. This would be um, a predefined strategies. And in this case, uh, again, you know exactly, you understand exactly why the computer is doing each action because you have encoded the rules, you have encoded the strategy in terms of a list of instructions. This is first do this, then do that. If the opponent does this, then does that. So this is um, an example of um, explicit programming where, again, you directly follow, you directly give the recipe, you directly give the strategy with the list of instructions, and the computer will just execute those instructions one by one according to what the opponent is doing. The second way that you can think about 
um, uh, teaching a computer to do this is again to uh, provide some examples. So if you just um, play um, with uh, with a friend uh, to this game and then you um, you play uh, 1000 times this game, then the computer, uh, if you provide this to the computer, the computer can try to understand um, based on who uh, won the game, can try to uh, directly guess just by looking by examples and try to come up with its own strategy by mimicking the strategy that it found to be the, the winning strategies. So in this case, the, the, the computer doesn't know what is the right way to play, it doesn't know that if um, there is already two crosses that are aligned, it should necessarily come up um, and block this attempt to prevent the other opponents to win. The computer only knows what the final goal of the game is, or at least it knows what is a winning game, just by looking at examples of previous games and just by knowing who won the game and by uh, trying to repeating those things, it can just learn by example, just by analyzing previous games and how those games got um, won or how people got defeated about this game. In this case, without explicitly knowing what's the best strategy, it can come up with its own strategy and can learn how to play the game and sometimes can learn how to play the game better than humans. So based on those examples, um, the, the definition that we are going to use for machine learning, uh, we're going to use the, the following definition. So um, the first thing is that there is not like a necessarily a, a clear definition for machine learning because not everybody uh, agrees on how to, what is the best way to, to define machine learning. Uh, the other thing is that this definition also tend to change over time because certain tasks or certain things were considered as machine learning before and uh, maybe at some point as people make progress um, uh, are not considered as machine learning anymore. So this is a pretty fluid definition get, that can uh, slightly change over time. Uh, but nevertheless, so we are going to define machine learning as follows. So we are going to say that uh, machine learning is um, the science. So machine learning is a science. It's the science of um, getting computers, uh, so of course machine learning is a sub-branch of computer um, science and computer engineering, so machine learning is the science of getting a computer to learn um, how to perform a given task. So uh, you want to teach computers, so you want computers to learn how to perform um, a given task. This task can be uh, anything. It can be answering a, a given question. It can be accomplishing a given action. It can be making a given calculation, taking a decision. So uh, this task is just a, an intellectual task, a task that usually would require a human to take a decision or to take an action. So machine learning is the science of getting computers to learn how to perform a task, but without being explicitly programmed on how to do this task. So without um, being explicitly um, programmed on how to do this task. So here the idea is that, um, again, there is a, if you just use um, uh, explicit programming, you can teach a computer how to um, uh, accomplish uh, a given task by providing some um, explicit condition and some explicit instruction on how to accomplish this task. Uh, but the main idea of machine learning is to teach computers to, to learn how to perform a given task, but without being provided explicit instruction on how to solve this task or how to accomplish this task. So this is really a, a key difference that there is um, no explicit um, uh, instruction. So it's um, the, the, the computer is just learning by example and uh, without having some explicit rules on how it should do to accomplish this task. So uh, this definition, uh, again, is, um, is not necessarily a definition that is fully accepted by everybody, but the main idea is that um, you need to uh, um, the, the, 
the, the main idea is getting computers to learn. So uh, machine learning is something that is applied to computers. Again, it's a, a sub branch of uh, computer science. It's the idea of how can we make computer learn um, like a human would learn, uh, for example, and to accomplish tasks. Uh, but uh, unlike um, conventional uh, computing where you just provide some instruction, here there is no predefined instruction. You just provide some examples and uh, the computer will learn how to accomplish this task by just looking at examples uh, without necessarily having an explicit set of instruction. And uh, another key aspect of machine learning uh, that we could have also put in the definition is that uh, usually since machine learning learn by examples, then its performance, um, the, how well it can accomplish this task, the performance of a machine learning algorithm will typically improve with experience. So the more machine learning at, um, has some experience, the more it is exposed to new data, previous data that you are providing as an example, the more it will learn how to accomplish this task and the more its performance in accomplishing this task will improve. So that's uh, a general thing is that performance, the, the performance of um, machine learning will typically improve with experience or with data. So any kind of previous experience that you provide, the more data you provide to machine learning, the more it can improve and, uh, and the better it can do or the higher the accuracy of its prediction will be. If you're using for machine learning. Then there is another um, key word uh, that is also in the name of this class, which is artificial intelligence. So now we're going to see how to define artificial um, intelligence. How does it differ from, um, from machine learning? Is it the same as machine learning? Is it different? Is machine learning part of artificial intelligence or vice versa? So here, the definition that we will be using for artificial intelligence is as follows. We are going to say that artificial intelligence uh, or AI is um, the science, so um, artificial intelligence AI is also a science. Um, it's the science of getting a computer to learn how to perform a task. So far it's very similar to machine learning, so it's the science of um, getting a computer um, to learn how to uh, perform a given task. Um, so this is uh, again very similar um, to uh, machine learning, so getting a computer how to learn to perform a given task. Um, but the main difference with machine learning is that uh, here we're going to be less specific. We're going to say that AI is the science of getting a computer to learn how to perform a given task, a task that um, normally require uh, uh, hum human intelligence to perform a task that would normally require human um, intelligence. So here the main idea is that we're going to define machine learning as the science on uh, of getting a computer to learn how to replicate, how to perform a task, how to take a decision, how to predict something uh, how to uh, perform a given task and a task that would uh, typically require uh, some level of human intelligence. So something that a computer would not be able to do on its own in a very easy fashion. For example, if you try to, um, to, um, to, to calculate with a computer what is the sum of uh, 1 plus 1 equal 2, uh, then it, it's not a task that require uh, human intelligence, like a computer can just uh, give you the answer to this without having any kind of uh, intelligence that looks like the, the level of intelligence that a, a human would have. So um, that's something that is pretty important is that you are performing a task that would normally require human intelligence. So it's a task that is complex enough that uh, a regular computer um, by, uh, would not be able to, to find on its own. So it's something that requires some level of, of intelligence. 
But here, um, it's not as specific as the definition of machine learning that we use. Like for machine learning, we said that uh, it's the, um, the science of getting a computer to learn how to perform a, a given task without being explicitly tr um, um, trained on how to solve this given task. Here, we are not adding this condition. We are just saying that it's the science of uh, uh, getting a computer to learn how to perform a task, a task that typically requires human intelligence. But we are not adding the, the condition that it doesn't it should not have explicit um, condition on how to achieve this task which means that the, the definition of machine learning is more restrictive than the definition of art, in, uh, artificial intelligence another way of saying that is that um, machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence and not the other way around uh, everything that is um, um, machine learning uh, based is also belonging to artificial intelligence but on the other way not everything about artificial artificial intelligence is about machine learning so those two terms are often um, used um, in a very uh, similar way but if you think about um, uh, artificial intelligence to be uh, this circle so if this is uh, artificial intelligence then uh, machine learning would be uh, a subfield of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, both uh, AI artificial intelligence and machine learning are also uh, a subfield of something that is even more general which would be um, computer science so if we think in terms of uh, hierarchy you have a uh, computer science the, the science of, um, of computers in general um, a subfield of computer science is uh, artificial intelligence and then machine learning is also a subfield of artificial intelligence and then within uh, uh, machine learning you also have uh, certain types of, uh, of subfields so if we think if we think about this definition of um, artificial intelligence or so of AI um, and so we said that artificial intelligence is the science of getting a computer to learn how to perform a given task that would normal or, uh, normally require some level of human intelligence. The idea of artificial intelligence is to um, simulate intellectual tasks. So what I mean by intellectual task, I mean task that requires some level of intelligence to be performed. So the main idea is to um, simulate a task that uh, typically human are the only ones who can do so simulate some um, intellectual um, task so there is different um, subfield of AI and again machine learning is uh, is one of those so if you think of AI it's really the idea of trying to teach computers to do things that humans typically um, typically do so there is different subfields um, one of the, the fields uh, within AI is everything that is related to search and, um, and planning. So this is one of the, the subfield of AI. Uh, for example, this is the, um, what is used if you want to teach a computer how to play a given game or how to play, ch uh, to play chess. Uh, in this case, you have a, a, a given type of, um, of options on what are the moves that you want to play, um, that you want to do when you play chess. So in this case, you will teach the computer to, to search and to plan for the, the best move, to come up with the best strategy. So this is about um, taking some actions, taking some decisions, um, uh, for example, how to, to play a given game, which is the, so in this case, the, the search and the, and the planning. So uh, the, the second, uh, a second field of uh, AI is everything that is related to, um, to reasoning. Um, and uh, knowledge representation. So everything that is related to um, thinking um, and representing knowledge, knowledge representation. So you, you can think about this, about uh, if you want to teach a computer how to answer questions um, from a given uh, set of knowledge so if um, let's assume that a given computer has access unlimited access to all the knowledge that is on the internet and based on this it needs to learn this knowledge how to represent it in order to organize this knowledge and then use this knowledge on uh, how to answer a quiz question for example so 
That's an example of reasoning and uh, knowledge representation, which is, again, something that um, you, humans can typically do, uh, but that was something that is more challenging for, for computers. A third aspect of uh, artificial intelligence is everything that is related to perception. So uh, perception is um, vision, hearing, uh, touching, etc. So everything like the the, the fifth, in, everything involving the the, the five sense of um, of uh, humans. How to um, specifically um, what is very uh, useful is how to recognize things, how to. Um, uh, um, analyze what we see and make sense of it, this is something uh, that is related to perception. How to understand a given noise, uh, recognize some voices, uh, this is everything that is related to perception. This is something that humans are very good at doing uh, by just uh, looking at something. That, uh, humans are very good at finding patterns finding uh, given objects uh, within a given pictures. That's something that is much more challenging for, for computers when uh, they, they receive a picture, they just see a collection of pixels and they, it's very hard for them to, to make sense of what those pixels means and to recognize patterns, to recognize objects, to recognize faces during those, uh, within those pictures. That's all uh, things that are related to, to perception. Uh, another field of uh, artificial intelligence is the ability to interact with the environment. So everything that is related to some um, interactions with um, the environment. So example of this is for example, how to um, interact with objects, how to take one object and to move it. So this is something that is very closely linked to, uh, to robotics. Um, um, and that's another field of machine learning that, again, that's something that uh, humans are typically pretty good at to take a given thing, a given object, move it from one position to the next. Um, this is something that is also very challenging for artificial intelligence, for robots and for computers to, um, to achieve as well as, uh, as humans. Um, the, the fifth uh, field of artificial intelligence is everything that is related to natural language processing. So how to see um, a given text and how to make uh, sense of those words and how to understand the meaning of, um, of some texts. So this is um, everything that is related to natural language uh, processing, so um, NLP. So um, again, the idea is um, how to uh, if the if you provide some words um, to um, to a computer, uh, these words can be a query, for example, for personal assistance. You can uh, ask uh, Siri or Alexa or Google um, a given um, um, a given instruction. So the first thing that um, this uh, virtual assistance will do is to. Uh, use its uh, perception, so field number three, to try to understand uh, what you are saying and convert it into words. And then it will move to natural language processing to try to make sense of the word that you are saying, to find the meaning of what you are saying. And then it will uh, try to come up with an answer, which is the, in this case, uh, related to the, the reasoning and knowledge representation. So the natural language processing is something that is related uh, for example, to translation, how to translate one language to the, to the next, how to understand uh, the, the meaning of sentences, things like this. And then um, the, the, the last branch of artificial intelligence is everything that is uh, related to uh, learning. So in this case, this is the, 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 the field of, of machine learning, is how to teach computers to learn how to do actions. Um, and in, uh, in many ways, um, machine learning is really a key component of artificial intelligence. It was not necessarily always like this, but more and more like uh, machine learning really become the, the skeleton of artificial intelligence. Because if you think about it, machine learning can really be used for all those previous tasks. You can use machine learning to inform how to, um, to search and planning, how to play games by just uh, learning by examples. You can use uh, machine learning um, for perception, how to recognize faces, recognize, uh, distinguish a dog from a cat in a given picture. Uh, this is something that uh, can be uh, and is more and more uh, accomplished by machine learning. 
how to uh, natural language processing, how to understand the meaning of sentences. This is also something that um, now heavily relies not on um, uh, explicit programming, but on machine learning. So machine learning is really at the core of artificial intelligence and is really um, uh, enabling all the other domains of artificial intelligence nowadays. So um, in this class, we are going to mostly focus on, uh, on machine learning as uh, being one of the, the most important domain of, um, of artificial intelligence. But again, keep in mind that artificial intelligence is not equal to machine learning. There is some uh, other uh, sub-branch of artificial intelligence that are not necessarily related to, um, to machine learning, although in many cases machine learning is used uh, within all those domains of uh, artificial intelligence. So one last thing about artificial intelligence is that uh, you might uh, hear another types of classification for artificial intelligence, which is um, the, the concept of uh, narrow uh, artificial intelligence uh, versus uh, general uh, artificial intelligence, so narrow AI versus uh, general AI. Uh, the main idea behind this um, distinction is that narrow AI uh, can only perform uh, one task. So uh, narrow AI can uh, just do one task at a time. Um, on the, in the context, the, the main idea about general AI is that it can handle any type of intellectual task. So any type um, of task that's um, the, the, the promise of general AI is that it should be able, just like human, uh, to accomplish any task. So the, the main idea of this distinction is that when you think about narrow AI, you really teaching the computers how to do one thing, and then you will teach it how to do something else, and then another thing, but you always need, for every new task, you will need to um, to teach the computer again by providing some, uh, some new examples or some new rules, um, uh, which is different from uh, the concept of general AI. General AI is more like what we are used to in uh, science fiction uh, series and movies, where you have an AI that can just think about any problems, uh, accomplish any task, just like a, a human. So um, in general, general AI uh, still doesn't exist yet. Um, so it only exists in movies. Um, but but the hope is one day to to be able to, to train a general AI that can uh, face new problems, accomplish new tasks, and continue to learn new things uh, just like humans do. Uh, but uh, nowadays, uh, all the, the artificial intelligence are typically classified as narrow because they are not as versatile as human. They can only uh, accomplish one task at a time. And every, every time you want to, to, to teach to accomplish another task, then you will need um, to, uh, to modify uh, this AI to add new examples or to change the, the rules in order to expand uh, an AI to uh, be able to, to teach it to accomplish more and more tasks. And then, so the, the last term that we are going to define today is um, the concept of uh, data science. So uh, data science, um, again, is uh, one of the, those other words that is um, very commonly used um, either as a replacement or in combination with, uh, with machine learning. So we are going to, to define it as follows. We are going to say that um, data science is um, the science. So just like artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's a science. It's the science of extracting meaningful, um, some meaningful uh, insights, extracting some um, meaningful insights from data. So we're going to define it as being the science of extracting some meaningful um, insights from data. So in this case, it's a definition that is pretty different from um, artificial intelligence of, uh, or of machine learning. Um, and in this case, so um, we can't really say that um, artificial intelligence is a subpart of data science or that data science is a subpart of um, of uh, artificial intelligence is really two different things that have some intersection but are, that are uh, nevertheless different from each other 
So when you think about data science, it can involve uh, machine learning. So machine learning is um, uh, heavily relies on, uh, on data science. Uh, it also involves uh, statistics. So um, statistics in general is um, a part of data science because you, you extract some meaningful information from data. You have some data, you can extract some information from all. Uh, very simple statistics is to calculate the average uh, or the standard deviation of a collection of data. This is some uh, some statistics, and, and it satisfies this definition of extracting some meaningful insights from the data. But data science is also about, um, for example, um, uh, data storage or, uh, for example, uh, forming um, a database of organizing data in a, in a meaningful fashion, finding some relationship, uh, between uh, different types of data. So again, this is some ideas of um, looking at the organization of the data and using some insights, uh, finding some insights within uh, the way the data is organized. So to, to summarize all those um, of concepts, you can think about it like this. So you have um, two uh, very uh, major field, which is first um, the field of um, computer science, um, and then you have uh, another important field, which is the, um, the field of, um, of data science. And those two fields have some, um, some level of, um, of intersection, but they also have some, um, some distinction. And not everything in data science belongs to computer science, uh, and not everything in computer science belongs to, um, to data science. Uh, within data science and um, uh, and within uh, computer science, you have um, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence would be uh, located like this. Um, it's um, part of artificial intelligence uh, belongs to the data science. Uh, in any case, artificial intelligence fully belongs to computer science. So it's a subgroup of computer science within um, AI, you have um, machine learning. Again, uh, machine learning is a subgroup, is fully contained within artificial intelligence, and uh, machine learning overlaps with, um, with data science. And then um, you can have some more subgroups, like uh, for example in machine learning, uh, we will see some more example in the coming parts. You have a supervised versus unsupervised machine learning, you have reinforced learning, you have for example uh, deep learning, uh, this is something that is uh, very popular these days. Uh, deep learning would be um, a sub-domain uh, of machine learning. So um, different algorithm, regression, classification, clustering, those are all different domains of machine learning. And uh, all those things um, interact at the same time with computer science, with artificial intelligence, and also with uh, with data data science because you learn how to make some uh, some take some insights to take some data and squeeze those data to extract some uh, some uh, insight some some new knowledge from those data